What's up, y'all? JR Raymond coming to you uh, back again from home. We got some breaking news from USBC where they say they're certifying these spring these uh, string pens. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I haven't read the article yet, so we're going to read that together. Uh, I'm going to pull that up and I'll put it on the screen here. Whew. I'm trying to gather my thoughts on this. I Honestly, I don't see any good coming from this for the sport. I don't like it. Uh, I've never been a fan of the string pens myself, and I think most traditional bowlers are not. But uh, I'm trying to stay open-minded. So, hey, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below. Tell me what you think about the string pens and all that. But uh, hit the notification bell as well, because I think a lot of people aren't getting notifications of these videos. But yeah, um, <laughs> I'm going to collect my thoughts during this intro, and then we will uh, we'll go through this article. Stay tuned. All right. Um, so it says here, USBC certifies string pin bowling as independent competition effective August 1st, 2023. Now let's read what they have to say. The United States Bowling Congress released a new research report on string pin setters and the USBC Equipment Certification Committee has approved final specifications based on research. Uh, so basically they're approved August 1st, final specifications reduce the string length to a minimum of 54 inches. Under those final specifications, key findings of this 2023 report include USBC's lab data indicates strike percentage on string pin bowling will be 7.1% less than when using free fall pin setters. How is that? How do they come up with that? And it, it says unusual spare conversion rates have been nearly eliminated. Boy, am I missing something here? Because when I remember string pins, it was like they got tangled so easily. And messengers were more likely because the messenger could go around or a wrap 10 could go around and pull the 10 back with the cord. What did they change to make that supposedly stop? Additional testing is needed to determine if a conversion between string pen or string pin setter competition and free fall is reasonable. Hmm. I'm not so sure I under, I, I want to see these studies and I would want to see a video of these studies that shows it happened that carry is less. Why is carry less? Are the pins different? Is the hollow hole where they put the string in the top? Is that, does that create some kind of difference? I'm not really sure. Uh, this 20, 2023 report follows up on a previous USBC string pin setter research that began in 2020. Results from an initial study were published in December of 2020. And another research report on the subject was made public in 2021 in September. In the 2021 report, USBC released the results of its initial phase of research on string pin centers along with preliminary Specifications that were developed to help promote similarity between the performance of the different pin setters and more closely align with free fall performance. Well, they failed on that then. If supposedly carry is 10% less than <laughs> free fall pins, that's not similar at all. 10% means a lot. That's a hit a game. Like, can you imagine losing a hit a game? That's literally 10 pins a game. People's average would drop 10 pins a game. If that was the case, which I'm all for, but I like the natural. Let the pins fly how they're supposed to. That's what benefits power. That's what that's why power is beneficial. So based on the results from the latest round of research, USBC has outlined the following next steps regarding string pin setters. USBC will certify string pin setters and string pin bowling as an independent category of equipment and competition separate from free fall machine. Okay, that, that's fair. Okay, that makes it okay. That I would be okay with. Now, obviously, so then you have a string 
pin average versus a free fall average. So you couldn't use your string pin average or your free fall average in each, you know, and mix them in tournaments and stuff. So that would be good. USBC will conduct additional testing with an objective of determining whether string averages can be used. Oh, really? The same as free fall or whether a conversion can be created. No, I don't think you should be doing that. I think you should just keep it separate. Keep them separate all the way around. You have a string pin average and you have a free fall average. They're obviously completely different. If, I mean, if you're talking 10 pins difference, that would be a difference. And <laughs> sandbagging could be even worse. Like, I just, I don't know, guys. I, I think that's, I'm torn on this. I mean, I guess I would have to try it a little bit more. I've bowled on string pins before. I'm not a huge fan. Maybe they changed them a little bit to make it more like free fall. Did they? Well, they said they shortened the strings, which to me, if they shorten the strings, that would make it, or maybe that makes it to where the pins can't get all the way across. And that's why averages go down. That's why carry goes down. So with the shorter strings, like the head pin can't go off the wall and make it all the way back to the 10 pin. It probably doesn't reach. Maybe. That's just a guess. I don't know for sure. But I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how they could have made it to where the pins don't wrap around the the strings of other pins. Obviously they're gonna happen with the ones that are close to each other. I'm just man, I'm torn. So like if <laughs> well that wouldn't make any sense, me saying it the way I just said it, because what if you leave a four ten? As a right-hander. Would it be impossible to make it then? Because now it won't reach the 10-pin or something along those lines? Because the string's not long enough? How does that work? Is it an automatic open? You leave a split and it's just done. You have no chance to make it. You either get one or none. Like, that would be crazy to me. I don't know, man. This is this is kind of mind-blowing to me that that's actually being certified. And I think they're doing... I mean, I like the idea of string pin machines in like family fun centers that they're never going to host tournaments. You know, they're never going to be a league house. It's all open play. They're just for family fun. They're only open for family fun, arcade and those kind of things. That makes sense because they require less maintenance and it's a little easier to fix a, a, you know, a pin jam and stuff like that because it's just fixing the strings. You know, if you've ever been in a bowling center or worked at a bowling center that has like the mini bowling where they're on strings like that, you know, those are so easy to fix. You don't have to worry about dead wood, none of that stuff. So out of ranges don't happen. Like that's not a thing, you know, so there's a lot less maintenance that has to be done for something like that. So in that aspect, it makes sense. And honestly, if I opened a training center, I probably would consider putting, if I could get them cheap enough, putting a string pen setter in, in my, in the training center, because then I wouldn't have to worry about all those mechanical issues, you know, um, Sure, you're not going to get the pins flying around, but it's just practice. You're worried about ball motion, how your ball's going through the pins, worried about how your ball's reacting on the lanes, you know, how your ball's reacting, period, based on layouts that we give you. So, But that is going to happen, I promise you. Uh, within the next five years is my goal to make uh, to build a training center of my own, to have a place where it has at least four lanes in it um, that I can build and have a retail space, a coaching area or a conference area, and then have the lanes themselves in an area. And the lanes would be obviously walled off and I would try to soundproof it as much as possible because you don't want to be in super noisy in the in the retail area while people are, you know, shopping and whatnot. But yeah, I mean and and I mean I've got a lot of ideas on what I can do with it. The, the ideas that I have would be a money maker because you can't treat it just as a only as a training center. Like you've got to do other things in there. Like you've got to be able to do, you know, mini type tournaments, challenges. Uh, you got to host parties in there. Um, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. So um, I don't know. I'm not sure what to think about this whole string pin setter thing, um, but it's it's an interesting idea. I can see benefits of it, but I see the downfall. I don't. I wouldn't like bowling a tournament on them because I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's natural. Maybe that's just the traditional type of bowler coming out of me. But um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think in the comments? Give me some. Uh, give me some inside 
maybe you guys know a little more than I do about these. If you know what how the carry has gotten worse, kind of give me some info on that stuff because I'm not sure how that would work out. But yeah, it's crazy to me. But I'm gonna get out of here. Um, there's gonna be other topics to talk about here shortly, I'm sure. Hey, if you haven't already gotten my books. I've got the new mental game, mastering the mental game of bowling, and then also mastering the approach. You can get those in a link in the description. Um, been selling a bunch of them. They're doing pretty good. It's the number one new release in bowling that's out right now. Um, so it's selling more than any other bowling book right now. Um, so make sure to go get yours uh, over at the link in the description. It's just on Amazon. You can find those uh, paperback and uh, ebook. And then I've also got a new one coming out, which is the... Uh, it's, uh, I forgot what I called it. Oh, The Art of Revolution. And it's mastering the bowling release. Um, so it's going to be, I'm going to touch on that a little bit during my clinic this weekend. I have a clinic tomorrow. It's a virtual clinic. You still time to get signed up for that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for that as well if you want to sign up. It's $24.99 to sign up as a non-member. If you become a member of the website, then it's only, and then if you become a member of the website and pay the $9.99, the clinic is actually free that you can get into. And if you can't make it to the clinic, I send the recorded clinic to all the members after it's done. So make sure to get signed up. Sign up at the link at bowl at uh, tenpendoctors.com. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. So we will see you guys later.